The party has been tasked with investigating wildfires raging in the forest of Neverwinter Wood. They're following an old map to a Fearbulg settlement, but they can't find it. The party's druid casts Detect Magic as a ritual where the settlement should be, and reveals a huge aura of illusory magic. They approach, and seemingly out of nowhere, a ten-foot-tall, red-haired man with fair skin and a pink nose emerges from behind the tree and says, You need to keep a keen eye to find us. Can't be too careful these days. The Fearbulk carries a glaive in one hand and a massive hide shield with gold leaf accents on the other. Though inexperienced, the party hopes the skills of this Fearbulk named Pink Nose will come in handy. So what does Bigby tell us? Bigby only really provides one short paragraph on Fearbulks, uh, which states that they are distant cousins of giants. Back in the distant past, Fearbulks wandered the primeval forest of the multiverse and gained some of the magic from the forests ever since. Fearbulks have innate obscurement and trickery magic, which resonates with the giant god Dying Castra, demigoddess of wit and pleasure. Due to their innate link to community and nature, some Fearbulks are pledged to Hiatia, H-I-A-T-E-A, Hiatia, let's call that, God of Nature. Fearbulgs were introduced to D&D as a playable race in Volo's Guide to Monsters. Read more there if you're interested. The uh, Mechanics-wise, there are two variants of the Fearbulg. Fearbulg listed in Big Base book, uh, the Primeval Warden and the Wanderer. Both monsters are designed seemingly to be the NPCs, the, or Dungeon Master player characters. The Primeval Warden seems to be inspired by the Druid, and the Wanderer by maybe an Echo Knight Fighter or a Cleric. The Both creatures have melee and ranged options, as well as some nice sweetest spells, uh, such as the Tech Magic, even the ever-popular and powerful Polymorph. Now, what does Bigby not tell us? Well, Bigby didn't tell us that the Fearbulls are generally uh, 10 feet tall, and stronger than the average bear, allowing them to wield two-handed weapons such as great swords in one hand. In combat, fearbulgs are a kind of nature-inspired gish wielding druidic magic and massive weapons like halberds. Despite how the primeval warden and the wanderer are presented in the book, most fearbulgs reject the gods of the ordering and instead follow what's called the code, a set of instructions by which you should base your life by, which states bravery, effort, and honor over birth. A tribe's honour over yours. The blood of the runt is the blood of the king. Give a thousand for nothing. Truth is the honour of the tribe. End quote. If the code is broken, it could result in enslavement or banishment from the kobold tribe. Fearbulk society also banishes their likes for doing anything that's considered unforgivable, such as starting a forest fire or killing a rare animal. Uh, also as a side note, the D&D monsters of the Fearbulg are inspired by the Irish myth of the Fearbulg, or the Men of the Bag, who were said to have brought bags of, filled with soil to Ireland to start growing and rewilding the lands. Uh, Fearbulg are also said to be descendants of the Nemed, which were uh, forced to abandon the island. And I believe they were the fourth, fourth group of people to settle Ireland, according to Irish mythology. So in conclusion... These two monsters, as presented, are decent NPCs, although the book states that they can be from any alignment, but it's clear from other sources that fear bulgs are neutral good, generally. I like that wizards are including more fleshed out NPCs, rather than the F-tier basic stats that we get, such as cultist or guard. They have their place, but I think having some depth like is given in the book is important. I would, however, prefer that these be explicitly named as NPC stat blocks and listed in an appendix where uh, NPCs normally are listed. It's hard to complain. Uh, I like what's presented. Uh, it's good for an NPC, so I'll give it a 14 out of 20.